A tremendous amount of disrespect shown to the anthem of the United States. And now Jimmy Lennon Jr. is set to go in there. Then playing the anthem a second time didn't help any to the crowd in attendance. Let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr., and get this fight underway. Here we go, Jimmy. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, bienvenidos aficionados al box a la Plaza México por la pelea principal de la noche. We welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to the featured bout of the evening that is all brought to you by Prestige Boxing Promotion. El Consejo Mundial de Boxeo, Presidente José Suleiman, Tercel Amigo, Moda Delas, Reporte 98.5, Sky Television, en la cerveza más fina, Corona. Esta pelea es sancionada por la Comisión de Boxeo de Distrito Federal, Presidente José Luis Espetia, representando el CMB, Miguel Acuña. Ahora presentando a los jueces. Introducing to you the judges at ringside. Victor Cervantes, Herminio Cuevas y Humberto Olivares. Y el referee es Lupe Garcia. All right, fans, here we go with the welterweight special attraction main event of the evening. Bien, amigos, esta es la pelea principal de la noche, la última revancha de esos altos en los pesos welter. Presentando en la esquina azul. Introducing first in the blue corner. Usando pantalón verde con franja blanca y de Morristown, Tennessee, en los Estados Unidos, pesando 66 kilogramos y medio. His weight 146 and one half pounds as a three-time super lightweight world champion. His record stands at 58 wins. 14 losses, one draw with 42 wins coming by way of knockout. Tiene un record de 58 victorias, 14 derrotas y un empate con 42 ganadas por knockout. Aquí está el ex campeón mundial tres veces, peso super ligero, presentando Frankie, the surgeon Randall. Y su rival, la leyenda viviente en la esquina roja. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, usando pantalón con los colores de la bandera de México, rojo, blanco y verde. Representando Culiacán, Sinaloa, México, pesando 65 kilos, 800 gramos. His weight, 145 pounds, as a legendary six-time world champion in three weight categories. His record stands at 105 wins, five losses, two draws, with 88 wins coming by way of knockout. Con un sobresaliente record de 105 victorias, cinco derrotas y dos empates. Tiene 88 ganadas por knockout. Aquí tenemos al seis veces campeón del mundo, damos y caballeros, por última vez, demos la bienvenida al gran campeón mexicano y mundial, presentando Julio César.
All right, so the ref calls him to the center of the ring, Lupe Garcia. Lupe Garcia. Ten point must scoring system, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, and fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. We are going to war with hot words. Stop, break, box, and time. Ya saben las reglas, Julio. Recuerda que los dos minutos menos te llenan de descalificación. All right, folks, so finally, what this night is all about is ready to begin. Julio Cesar Chavez, you get to see him in his final competitive fight. 105, five losses, two draws, 88 wins by knockout, six-time world champion, taking on Frankie Randall, three-time world champion. This is fight number three, the battle for the bragging rights between Chavez and Randall. Frankie won the first fight. Chavez got the second fight. And this is the third fight in their career. Here they go. Julio Cesar Chavez in his prime was just terrific with pinpoint control and his punches behind the elbow of opponents. Frankie Randall in his prime was just an extraordinary fighter with great ability to land punches right on the butt. Both guys trying to get the jabs in the face of their respective opponents. Randall decked up the green trunks facing it. Then Chavez with his back to you. And you hear the crowd in attendance here chanting Chavez, Chavez. Julio Cesar Chavez wearing the colors of the flag of the country of Mexico. It's really silver sparkly trunks with red and green. It's supposed to be white, red, and green. But we'll give him a little uh, grace here since it's his night. This is Chavez's salute to Mexico and his great fans, and the Mexican fans salute to Chavez by showing out mass here in round number one of the scheduled 10-round affair in the welterweight division. Both guys came in under the 147 limit, so they both train hard for this fight. Chavez in at 145, Randall in at 146 a half. This is round number one as Frankie touches him up with light left jabs. In the prime of his career, those left jabs would have been stinging jabs, followed up by the right hand. I asked Frankie earlier today, I said, do you feel anything that age has taken away from you? And of course, like most athletes, he said no. He said, you know, there's a lot of baseball pitchers in the United States that can still pitch at 40 years old. The only difference is they're not getting hit in the head by the guy that they're going against. But Frankie has got himself in tremendous shape at the 145 to be ready for this fight. No serious blows landed by either man here in round number one. Randall hasn't been able to get the Chavez at all, really. A couple of light left jabs, and he lets the right hand fly. And it's noticeable that the skills that were once there are not there by Frankie, but Chavez does a pretty good job showing the flashes of what made him great, those three blasts underneath the right elbow of Frankie, so Frankie decides to pick up the pace. Frankie's legs look a little wobbly already. He's been hit to the body a couple of times, and his legs are, really don't look like they're underneath him that well. He tries to throw some punches, and his punches look a little bit awkward, does uh, Frankie. Two really good kids, two tremendous athletes in their primes. But this is a great opportunity. And tonight really wasn't about the prize fight as Chavez goes head hunting with the right hand, which cracks the left side of the jaw of Frankie Randall. Frankie had a tremendous record going. Most of his losses have been in the last four or five years, but he's got uh, 58 wins in his career. A rather, uh, just a tremendous career by uh, Frankie Randall over the years. 14 losses, but most of his uh, losses, as I mentioned, have come in recent years. Closing seconds now, this is the first round, and Chavez has outboxed him here in round number one. Body shots getting through by Chavez, and Frankie takes a deep breath. The bell ends round number one, and so we saw some of the flashes of what Chavez was once able to do with his body shots. As we take a look at Julio Cesar Chavez, he would have won that first round of the judges' scorecards. Victor uh, Cervantes. Hermino Cuevas and Humberto Oliveras are the judges here as we take a look at the replay. You see what I mean? Now those are shots that Chavez in his career would have really punished guys behind the elbow. Frankie in their first fight of course was the first man to drop Julio Cesar Chavez. That was back in 1994 for the Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. 140 pound division and is Frankie trying to get something going but 
notice that he misses. And Chavez still able to get his shots through there. Frankie had took on the nickname the surgeon because he had pinpoint control with his hands in his prime. And he didn't quite look like the surgeon here in the first round. But this is more than a prize fight. This is about the celebration of the career of Julio Cesar Chavez. And Chavez elected to bring Frankie Randall back to settle it once and for all, even though they're both over 40 years of age. We're in round number two. I'm Bob Sheridan. You're watching pay-per-view around the world, especially in our Latino community. Glad that you could be with us. Had a great opportunity to see a terrific fight with Cadona and uh, Miguel Angel Gonzalez. And in this one, we get to see the flashes of the great former nine world champions between, nine world titles, I should say, between these two great champions. Chavez with a back to the ropes. Frankie paws with the left hand, doesn't really land anything. And again, Frankie looks very awkward with his punches. This is round number two. It's scheduled for 10 rounds. They both come in underneath the 147-pound welterweight division limit. Frankie shuffles off to the left. You see, he just can't seem to get his shots off. Then he paws with his left hand. He misses all his shots. There's about five left hands that Frankie fell short of, and finally he did land one up high in the forehead of Julio Cesar Chavez. Round two action. That's the surgeon, Frankie Randall. Wild with the right hand is Chavez, and he misses the left as well. Body shot that time by Frankie, and uh, Frankie looks at uh, Lupe Garcia, the referee, and says uh, to Julio, keep him up. It is prime. Julio Cesar Chavez had a lot of borderline low blows, and he got away with it in a good part of his career because they were right kind of on with the, the shots just like that, as a matter of fact. Just right on the white uh, area of uh, Frankie Randall's uh, green trunks is where Chavez made a living in the prime of his career, and he's trying to soften Frankie Randall up in the second round of this fight in the twilight, not the twilight, the end of his career. This is his last professional fight, probably the last pro fight for either of these guys. As Frankie tries to answer back with some body shots of his own, but Chavez is landing far more blows than his Frankie Randall. Remember, there's altitude of uh, 5,000 feet here, so it might be tough for Frankie to really keep his uh, strength up for very long in this fight. He's trying to battle back under a minute to go here in the second round. As Chavez continues to bang the body, Frankie comes with a light uppercut. Chavez shifts around, tries to get in position to land his, and his Frankie battling off the ropes. Chavez loads up the right hand. You know, I did the fight uh, a few years ago when Hector Camacho Jr. and uh, Roberto Duran did saw this one song, and this is a better fight. It's not them in their prime, but they're still working hard. A lot of pride between these two men. Chavez, of course, wants to go out so bad because it's in front of his hometown crowd here in Mexico City. Frankie tries to score, but he's getting punished for shots by Julio Cesar Chavez. Both men have trained extremely hard for this fight. Closing seconds now. This is the second round. As Chavez punishes the midsection of Frankie Randall as Frankie's forced to back off. Bell ends round number two. That's another Chavez round. So Julio Cesar Chavez has won the first two rounds of the scheduled 10-round affair. You take a look at uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. I want to thank our stage manager, Angelista Estevia, who's done such a great job at ringside here in a mad place to watch a fight. Do a fight. Great job here at ringside. As you take a look at the replay here in round number two, Chavez trying to land those body shots and Frankie trying to avoid them moving his head around. You see Frankie missing so many more shots than you would have seen back in his prime. And I'm amazed that Chavez is uh, as successful as he is in landing his shots. Julio Cesar Chavez, 105 victories, five losses, two draws. In his last big fight, he lost to Costa Zoo in a six-round TKO. In his prime, certainly one of the greatest boxers in the history of boxing. And I talked about his great body shots. I remember leading up to the Purnell Whitaker fight, talking with guys like Ted Schuyler of the Associated Press about this guy being one of the great fighters pound for pound of all time. And then, of course, as his career began to go downhill as he reached, uh, reached his uh, mid-30s. I mean, he had so many fights. And Frankie Randall trying to make a goal of it here in the third round. Chavez continues to try to bang the body. Frankie keeps throwing punches, and he tries to get Chavez upstairs. Chavez
a miss. Tucks the chin and keeps going to work at that body of Frankie Randall. Bam! Now he tries to come back upstairs. Frankie throws his shots. Don't quit neither one of these guys, and we're in the third round right now. And both men, Chavez is 41, Frankie 42. And again, for Frankie, fighting at this altitude has got to be very tough at 41, yeah, 42 years old. It's a mile high here, over 5,000 feet in Mexico City, and the air is thin. It's a fairly cool evening and a nice night to fight. Both guys up in their toes, nobody hurt, nobody visibly shaken at this point in the fight. We're in round three. Chavez to the right of your screen, tries to work his magic to the body of Frankie Randall. Randall forces his back to the rope and the chance begins, Chavez, Chavez. There's those borderline low blows again by Chavez that he made a career out of. In his prime, he was pinpoint behind the elbow of opponents and then coming right back after a couple of left hooks to the body, he threw a wild right hand and often catches opponents and knocked out 88 of his opponents during his career. He's actually had more knockouts than Frankie Randall has had professional fights. But Chavez a throwback to the days of the early part of last century when guys had over 100 fights routinely. You don't see that happen too often today, the way guys posture for positioning. Frankie just tried to take a big deep breath and then throw a couple of punches. He's got Chavez with a couple of nice left hooks. And now Chavez makes him miss a bit. He sits back on the ropes to try to get some oxygen in those lungs of his as well. Both jaws of both men hanging down now as the fatigue factor begins to take its toll. It's been a pretty good pace for guys in excess of 40 years of age. And you see Lupe Garcia, the referee, say, hey, Julio, don't use your forearms to push it back. Round number three action continues as Frankie tries to load up shots and Julio goes back to the body. Both guys try to land body shots and Julio got a nice cracking shot in to the left side of the jaw of Frankie Randall forcing Frankie to hang on. Frankie looks real fatigued right now. He keeps throwing punches and they're just on uh, automatic right now. The closing seconds if this is the third round from the bull ring in Mexico City. Randall in the green trunks and Chavez in the white trunks as round three ends. That's another Chavez round. Chavez, while Randall worked extremely hard in the third round, is landing more clean blows, and that's the difference. I have Chavez winning all three of the first three rounds. As I look across the way, and as you look into Frankie Randall's corner, you can see that they were working on him as we take a look at the replay now. And you see how fast the pace is and how hard these guys are working. Sean Gibbons and uh, Don Hale, Dr. Don Hale, trying to work as best they can to revive Frankie. Frankie looks very, very tired with his legs outstretched as you continue to watch the replay of how hard they work in the third round. We're coming up to the fourth round of a scheduled 10 round affair here in Mexico City. Back to our live shot now, I'm Bob Sheridan. You're watching a pay-per-view salute to Julio Cesar Chavez. And many of the Latin markets around the United States and around the world, I know you've enjoyed our night already because we had an opportunity to see a sensational fight between Miguel Angel Gonzalez and Ernesto Carmona in just a great war in which, of course, the former lightweight champ uh, Miguel Angel Gonzalez came out with a unanimous decision victory. And this fight has been a lot better than a lot of people predicted. The, the action hasn't slowed down while they both seem a bit fatigued and they don't have the great skills that they had uh, six or seven years ago. They don't look too bad out there as far as I'm concerned, especially Chavez has been able to land some nice body shots. Frankie has shown that he came in uh, condition to fight uh, at least into the fourth round because uh, he's throwing a lot of punches, though they look a lot more awkward than they did many years ago when he was in the prime of his career. But what do you expect? I mean, you get 40-year-old guys that uh, certainly had tremendous careers, and I'm finding it very entertaining to watch these two guys. See who can come out on top. They both want it so bad. Of course, Chavez... And his, kind of his swan song takes a looping right hand off the hands of Frankie Randall. Chavez trying to get to the body of Frankie. Both guys working extremely hard and the pace hasn't slowed down. I mean, they just haven't stopped throwing punches through the first three rounds and now into the fourth round of this fight. Your time, Frankie, your time, man, man, too. Randall misses a couple of hooks and then uh, blocked on the gloves and his Chavez back to the body of Randall. And he catches him with the right hand. Back upstairs with a couple of nice left hooks and really good shots inside by Chavez, but Frankie doesn't stop throwing punches. 
Randall in the green trunks facing you, takes that body shot, tries to come with an uppercut of his own, but he doesn't quite catch Julio Cesar Chavez. Lupe Garcia does his job as the hook thrown by Julio Cesar. And now Frankie pushes him up against the ropes. Nice straight right hand, gets through that time by Chavez in the right hand lead. Frankie answers with a left hook of his own. Chavez tries to set him up with that elbow, and Frankie works downstairs and then back upstairs to the head of Julio Cesar Chavez. There's no quit in either one of these guys, and Frankie let fly with a shot just as the referee Lupe Garcia was coming in to separate the two. Again, Chavez, who made a career out of these body shots, tries to throw the double left hook and the right hand upstairs, or he'll throw the right hand to the behind the elbow and then come right back upstairs with the right hand, but he doesn't quite have the power that he once possessed to flatten a guy like he could a few years ago. But Chavez avenged another loss that he had, and that was to Willie Wise in the fight last November in Tijuana. He was able to avenge that by uh, stopping Wise, who was cut over his eye when they stopped that fight. He fought Terry Thomas a couple of years before that in a previous fight, and then won in the second round TKO. And you see them exchanging shots here as Frankie hangs in there, throwing some pretty good shots of his own. And the bell ends the fourth round. That was a better round for Frankie Randall. I thought Frankie may have won that round. So I got Chavez winning the first three and Randall winning the fourth round. We're getting ready to go to the fifth round of a scheduled ten round fight here. Trying to make an equipment adjustment on the far side as we take a look at the replay here. Chavez lands the right hand. Frankie throwing a lot of leather in the fourth round. Hangs on. Chavez lands a good shot to the body. But you notice one thing, the pace of this. I mean, this is a slow motion. This is a replay. The pace is pretty darn good. Coming up to round number five at the Bull Ring in Mexico City. Second out. Tremendous crowd turned out to see the final effort of Julio Cesar Chavez. And Chavez thanks his many, many fans here in Mexico by giving him one last fight. And here we go with round five. Again, this is scheduled for ten. But Chavez won the first three, and I thought Randall might have well just nosed out Chavez in the fourth round. Now here's Frankie going to work with a jab in the face. Tries to throw the right hand but doesn't get it off. And I've noticed that a couple of times by Frankie tonight where Chavez seems to be getting off a little bit better than Frankie. Frankie might have a second win right now and as I say that he gets clipped with a pretty good left hand. Chavez hangs on and Frankie has to use a lot of energy to sort of lift him up. Randall comes forward. He still knows how to throw the jabs. He drives off the back foot and he throws some body shots and Chavez comes out of the corner. Looping right hand now by Chavez. Chavez not doing much in the latter portion of the fourth round. Hasn't done much here in the opening part of the fifth round. Frankie bores in on Chavez. But again, you notice the pace of the fight is pretty darn good. A couple of 40-year-old guys doing battle. Here's Chavez with three nice left hooks. All of them landing. Not really heavy shots, but they are landing. And they will take a toll on the body of Frankie Randall, at this, especially at this altitude. Frankie has to hang on a little bit. Now they both look a little bit sloppy. As Chavez realized that Frankie might be a little bit on the fatigue side. And Lupe says, calls timeout as Frankie was hit by a low blow. Frankie Randall will get up to five minutes if he wants it with a low blow. But I doubt he'll take that much time. Both guys uh, seem to be huffing and puffing, and both guys have been victimized, and both guys have landed the uh, low blows. I don't know what that kind of wave that Chavez just gave to Frankie was. I guess he said, okay, let's go. Let's try to keep it clean. That uh, little extra respite would have helped Frankie a lot more than Julio Cesar Chavez. You see Frankie has revived a little bit, maybe has a little bit of adrenaline flow here. Well, as much as are awkward, he seems to want to get the business here. And here's Frankie Randall trying to pick up the pace here in the fifth round. Chavez able to hold him off and start to come forward. Then he pushes off with that elbow. He's been warned about that on one occasion by uh, referee uh, Lupe Garcia, who's an excellent referee, by the way. He's seen his work many, many times. Chavez with the straight left hand and then the right hand of the body of Frankie. 
Under a minute to go in the fifth round, Frankie just cracks the left hook, and they exchange low blows again. Frankie catches uh, Julio Cesar upstairs, and Chavez cracks him with a pretty good right hand as well. Taking body shot that time by Chavez behind the elbow, and those are the shots that made his career. Only they were really punishing shots when he was in his run. Straight, looping right hand, and the left hook. Frankie might be in a bit of trouble as I say that. He's flat-footed, but here he battles back. A lot of pride between these two men. They want to prove to each other who the tougher man is. And Frankie seems a little bit dazed right now as his legs are very, very heavy. Chavez moves in, bangs the body downstairs of Frankie Randall. Randall comes back with a couple of lefts and rights of his own. Look at Frankie, he doesn't stop throwing punches, does he? There's the body shots in the closing seconds of the fifth round. Chavez landing the heavier blows. Frankie throwing a lot of punches, but nothing seems to be landing right now. Here comes the bell to end the fifth round. Like tap just at the bell in the fifth round. And that's a Chavez round again. We take a look at the uh, corner of Frankie Randall and they continue to make that equipment adjustment. And you take a look at some of this action, both guys landing the occasional shot. I thought that uh, Chavez got perhaps the better, and there's that low blow. I thought Chavez got the better of the deal because he does land those low blows occasionally. And you see him landing the uppercut. Now, now look at all the punches that Frankie throws and nothing really lands. I mean, his work ethic is terrific, but not a lot of stuff landing. And there's a little tap just at the bell at the end of the fifth round. Second out. It's after midnight here at the Bull Ring in Mexico City. As we go to the sixth round, Julio Cesar Chavez to the right of your screen, Frankie Randall and Green to the left of your screen. All right, here we go, round number six. Big right hand crash to the left eye socket of Frankie Randall that time, thrown by Chavez. Frankie seems to be all right in the legs. Up on his toes, coming forward as Chavez backs off, dances around to his right. The noticeable thing with the age difference that I see with Frankie is, you know, his nickname was the surgeon, and his pinpoint control that he had of his hands four or five years ago just isn't there tonight. On a couple of occasions when he's wanted to throw, he hasn't just been able to get the shot off. And at other times, he's looked awkward with some of his punches. And of course, that's what age robs a guy of. And a guy working as hard as a well-conditioned as Frankie is, he doesn't realize that. Now, look he says, come on, keep it clean. Stop grabbing and grappling. Let's keep the fight going well. We're in the sixth round. Right in the center of the ring in his green trunks is Frankie Randall with his hands high, dances toward Chavez. Chavez at times has been able to land those shots behind the elbow of Frankie Randall. Frankie Randall really hasn't landed any surgeon-like punches throughout the course of the fight. Every once in a while he'll throw a looping shot which will catch Chavez, but it doesn't seem to do much damage. Chavez with two good body shots again, and he's done that throughout the course of the fight. And you wonder how much more time Frankie can take the punishment. Just when you think that it might be catching up with him, he explodes again. Chavez tries to work downstairs in the sixth round here. Frankie walks him down, gets him with his back up against the ropes. Circling around is Chavez, and Frankie throws him shot, and Julio knows how to tie him up. They're shadows of their former selves, but there's no quit in either one of them. A lot of pride. Right hand gets through, but it doesn't hurt Chavez that time. It catches him, and that's a punch that would have, in his prime, flattened a lot of guys. Under a minute to go now in the sixth round. This is scheduled for 10. Neither fighter has been down, neither fighter visibly shaken. Nobody cut. There's been uh, several borderline low blows thrown by Chavez. Crisp right hand inside by Frankie, but again, the right hand power shot of Frankie doesn't seem to be hurting Chavez whatsoever. And those are punches that would have been punishing a short time ago. That was a double left hand followed up by the right hand of Chavez. That dropped many guys, and Frankie now is beginning to show some serious signs of fatigue. As I say that, he gets his hands back up and kind of plods forward. Closing seconds now of the sixth round of this fight. 
Frankie's leg seems very, very heavy as the bell ends the sixth round. And Chavez, let's go at the bell. That's another Chavez round. On my scorecard, I've got it 59-55 uh, in favor of Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez has just landed more blows. No quitting Frankie Randall as we come up to the seventh round. Take a look at the work ethic of both of these men here in six round action. And take a look at the face of Frankie Randall. He really looks like he's very, very fatigued. As you see him leaning up against the ropes, his legs outstretched. And whether we get another round or so out of him is uh, the big question. Again, the pace for these two guys at their age has been very, very good. They haven't been uh, boring us whatsoever. They're working hard. There's a noticeable lack of power off the hands of Frankie Randall. And uh, for that matter, there's a lack of power for Julio Cesar Chavez. But it's going to be a fatigue factor probably that will end this fight. Frankie just got clipped by a short, crisp left hook across the eyes to Chavez. You get the idea that Chavez is in second gear now, that he may want to finish this thing off. Frankie's legs look very heavy in the thighs and in the knees right now, although he tries to bounce up on his toes to get some circulation through those legs, which seem very, very heavy at age 42 at a mile altitude here in Mexico City. Chavez is trained in the mountains, and he's used to the altitude. He's fought many, many times here in Mexico City. So he knows what it's all about. This is the seventh round. It's scheduled for 10. Frankie the Surgeon Randall decked out in the green trunks to the right of your screen. Now with his back to you, Chavez facing you now to the right of your screen. Chavez gets the jab off, then the body blow underneath the elbow of Frankie Randall. Pace has slowed down a little bit here, and as I say that, they both open up their punches. The crowd is starting to chant Chavez, Chavez, as the right hand flies and catches Frankie. But the noticeable lack of power has Randall still on his feet. Chavez with the good body shots from time to time here. You can see the sparks that were once there in the great champion that he was, as he still has the ability to land those shots behind the elbow. Frankie continues to block forward, and as the rounds continue to go by, his legs look heavier and heavier. Frankie now has to hang on. He doesn't have as much uh, bounce in those legs as he had a couple of rounds ago. A lot of that has to do with the body shots, and a lot has to do with the high altitude here in Mexico City. Nice uppercut, left hook by Chavez. Is Frankie trying to throw some more shots? But notice how many shots that Frankie misses. And the guy, again, I use the term the surgeon, he didn't miss shots like that when he was in his prime. Both guys trying to put on a good show for the crowd of the here. Chavez loading up shots to the body and he gets the crowd's attendance. Uh, attention, I should say, very rapidly. Anything that Chavez does, there's a nice left hand to get through by Chavez. Body shots. You notice the pace for these guys in the seventh round. 41 is Chavez, 42 is Randall, and both of them outside the ring have done their fair share of partying, so they had to get back and train very, very hard for this fight, and obviously the fact that they're in the seventh round and the pace of the fight through seven rounds has been uh, nothing short of uh, very, very good. We're in the closing seconds now of the seventh round of this fight. Many people had expected to go for three or four rounds in the middle of the seventh both guys throwing at the belt. So as I look at my scorecard, I've got a Chavez 69, Randall 64 as we come up to the eighth round of this fight. We'll take a look at the replay and see how hard they're working for you. He lands some shots inside. Julio Cesar Chavez blasting away with the left hand. Catches Frankie by the right eye. Finally, Frankie has to hang on. Coming up to the eighth round of this scheduled ten-round affair here at the Plaza de Toros in Mexico City in the farewell fight for the career of Julio Cesar Chavez. 
wonderful crowd turned out to bid him adieu. And here we go, round number eight. Again, Randall and Green, Chavez in the white trunks. So I take a look at my scorecard, I've got it again, 69-64 in favor of Chavez. Chavez to me has landed more clean blows in more rounds than has uh, Frankie Randall. I gave Randall the fourth round and Chavez pretty much everything else. Frankie gets the left hand through and I look at concern in the face at time of uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Let's fly with the left hand. Uh, Chavez drops his hands for the first time of the fight and backs off a bit. Frankie comes forward, let's fly with the right hand, but it just grazes Chavez. His straight right hand catches Chavez by Frankie Randall that time. Chavez with his back to the ropes, and he doesn't fight well with his back to the ropes. Trying to get Frankie to come in, and then he'll come with an uppercut or a couple of light left uh, hooks, and then try to land the big right hand. Now Chavez says to Frankie, come on in here, come to me. Frankie stands up, tries to make Chavez come to him. Chavez comes forward, the right hand sails over the head of Frankie Randall. Randall comes forward and he cracks Chavez with a pretty good right hand. But again, that's the one thing that I notice at this age, that never mind the fact that he doesn't have that pinpoint surgeon-like control that he had of his hands, and that he doesn't get off as quick, but he doesn't have the power that he had, of course, early in his career when he was a younger man. And I'll tell you this, but what they lack in the age 40 bracket, they certainly don't lack in desire because there's been a pretty darn good pace of this fight. Frankie Randall held three world titles, Julio Cesar Chavez held six world titles, in three different weight classifications. And while make no mistake about it, you watch in the shadow of their former selves in the case of both fighters, it's pretty entertaining that they're working so hard at this age to try and make a statement against the other. Each man is trying to make a statement against his opponent. Frankie thought he was robbed in the second fight. The WBC rule that indicates that you lose a point if you are not cut in the accidental head, but actually cost him the second fight. They had uh, most of the scorecards and uh, Chavez ended up with it by the virtue of losing the point that Frankie Randall lost in the scorecard. Uh, Chavez got the decision. This is round eight. This is today. This is Chavez Randall three. Pace continues pretty good. In the eighth round here is Chavez and Randall work extremely hard. Well, these two guys uh, continue to keep the hands free and let the hands fly now as we come up to the closing seconds of the eighth round. Both guys throwing a lot of punches. Frankie looks like he's hurt and may be ready to go right at the bell. His legs were gone and looked like he was ready to go. At the end of the eighth round, Chavez took that round. Take a look at the action here. This is a real low blow. So that's how Frankie was hurt again. Chavez got away with this throughout his career. And Chavez is slick in that he throws low blows to the offside of the referee. And at age 41, he still knows how to do that. And that really hurt Frankie Randall with that low blow. But coming up to the ninth round, and Frankie kind of glued to that stool right now. Chavez looks uh, mighty fatigued, but not as bad as Frankie, but Frankie took a real tough low blow. And now he gets back up and seems to be all right as he tries to kick some uh, blood circulation into those legs again. This is round number nine. This is scheduled for 10 rounds. And it has all the look that it's gonna go the distance. Randall up on his toes, laces out with that left hand in the face of Chavez. He's a little bit annoyed that Chavez has hit him with so many low blows during the course of the fight. Some of them are accidental, but it doesn't make any difference whether they're accidental or not. It's an illegal blow, and he's got away with it a lot of borderline body shots uh, in his career. There's another one that was taken itself to the border. But that one, Frankie Randall was able to pick off. We're in the ninth round. Randall to the left of his green and green. Chavez continues to work. Trying to work the body is Chavez. And 
That time, both guys exchanged shots, and Randall backed him off with a left hand and then a straight right hand. And again, those power shots a couple of years ago might have dropped Chavez, but it didn't work here tonight. Chavez, I must say, has got himself in extraordinary condition for age 41. To put on a final show for his fans here in Mexico City is that body shot again. And those body shots, by this stage and most of his fights in his prime, would have finished fights. Their first fight went the distance and Frankie got the split decision. This uh, last fight in their career, I would say Chavez is comfortably out in front. He's landing many more blows than his Frankie. Frankie's making a fight out of it. He tries to land a good shot there with the right hand and to catch Chavez, but doesn't seem to hurt him. And again, those power shots, right hands that Randall has landed in this fight on about four or five occasions would have dropped fighters earlier in his career. Now Chavez loads up the shot. Frankie comes off the ropes throwing shots. And by golly, I tell you, the pace of the fight has been pretty damn good with a minute to go here in the ninth round. There's Chavez tries to work the body of Frankie. Frankie wants no part of it as he throws punches of his own. Now Chavez forces him into the corner. Both guys still throwing punches and trying to throw them as hard as they can. Now Lupe Garcia has to separate the two. Frankie seems to get some sort of second win again. He's hanging on a little bit here. And we come up to the last few seconds here in the ninth round. Chavez is trying to put the pressure on Randall and trying to end this thing. Randall falls back off the ropes and not unleashes a pretty good right hand of his own. It's out of 10 seconds to go in the ninth round of this fight. I'm getting to see the show that is winning most of the round. Clean blows, and the bell ends the ninth round. This one will go to the tenth round, and that's an extraordinary effort by both guys. Let's go! I've got an 87-82 in my scorecard, and if the judges have the same way, Randall would need a knockout to win. As you take a look at some of the action here in the ninth round, you see the borderline low blow. Not too many people would have thought this would have gone into the tenth round at the age of these two fighters. We're getting ready for the 10th and final round. All right, here we go. This is the 10th and final round of this fight that most people never dreamed would go this far. Two aging former champions, nine world titles between the two. Julio Cesar Chavez, I have him comfortably out in front of my scorecard. Frankie Randall in the green trunks will have to knock him out, I think, to win this fight. That's exactly what he's trying to do. Look at this. Randall unleashing shots. But Chavez says, no, you're not going to put me down in front of my home crowd. As the battle continues. Body shots. Back upstairs is Chavez. Randall comes forward. He let his barrage go in the first 10 seconds of this round. And you see his punches look a little bit awkward, but he's still throwing. And again, I have to say, for the age of these guys, the pace in the 10th is not pretty darn good. But, hey, you don't get nine world championships, six for Chavez and three for Randall, without being the possessor of a tremendous heart, along with terrific ability. And look at this, both of them trying to put on a final show with extraordinarily talent that they had in the primes of their career. They're trying to go as best they can right to the very end of this fight. Neither guy wants to quit. Neither guy wants to get out. Neither guy wants this fight to end his career with a loss. Julio Cesar Chavez has landed four clean blows from the point of the fight, but Frankie Randall has nothing short of heart and courage throughout the course of this fight. Look at this. 
look at the way these guys are working in this fight, and that's a credit to the great champions that they once were. Nobody wants to quit. There's no quit in either one of them. Both guys have got to be out on their feet, especially with Randall fighting it a mile high here. And the pace of the fight has been like this throughout. Pretty furious right now as Chavez tries to end it with a knockout, or at least putting Randall down. Remember in their careers, Randall never went down and Chavez did go down. Chavez would like to be paid right now with that, but instead Frankie battles off the ropes. Look at this. How about this? No quit neither one of these fighters. Well, we have noticed the lack of power that they once possessed. There's no lack of heart of either one of these guys. Continues to bang, does Chavez as he comes forward. Randall sort of hangs on and lets fly with a left hook of his own, and now he has the hang on. I want to get that energy sucked up the same as Frankie Randall did that time, but Frankie doesn't stop throwing punches. And Chavez, in the last closing seconds of the fight, pours in on him. Both guys are flailing punches until the final now. Chavez is throwing more punches, but there's no quit. Go to go in the seventh of the What a battle! At 41 and 42 years of age, respectively, Julio Cesar Chavez had a great performance for his age against the former world champion Frankie Randall. Well, Chavez Randall 3 was not disappointing. It was an excellent prize fight to watch. We're going to have to get out of here in a hurry once the decision is rendered. We want to thank our studio coordinators in uh, Hollywood, Mike Randolph and our producer in Hollywood, David Getz, and our Mexican coordinating producer, Ben Estevillo, for his great job. Our technical manager, and a tough job it was. Big John Fingers, great job. Our associate producer has been uh, Jason Fidel. And we'll get the decision here rapidly for you, and then we'll see so long. So you have the opportunity to see a pretty remarkable fight for these two great champions. <laughs> Good night, everybody.